Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 as usual and as my last top 5 tier list video of the top 5 strongest heavy tanks in the game in my opinion was received quite well by you guys. I figured today I'd give you my choices for the top 5 strongest tank destroyers in the game. Now as this didn't seem to be quite clear in my last video I'm going to state a short disclaimer at this point and that's that the tanks I will be listing now are not the strongest tanks for competitive play or clan wars or anything but they are just the vehicles that will bring you the best results on average in my opinion in normal random battles in world of tanks now obviously depending on your personal play style and preference these tanks may vary for each and every one of you but the tanks I chose are based on win rate statistics and my personal experience and also just the overall characteristics of these tanks. So I will be giving you the five strongest tank destroyers with which you'll have the most success on average in random battles in my opinion. Starting things off will be the Waffenträger of E100 in the number 5 spot. Now many of you will have maybe expected this vehicle to be placed a lot higher in my list, but I've actually got quite mixed feelings about the Waffenträger E100, especially considering that it was nerfed quite a bit actually a few patches ago. But let's not start off with the cons, but talk about the pros first. Now, the Waffenträger of E100 has got an insanely high burst. It actually has got the highest burst in the game with its 128mm gun. It's got an autoloader with a reload time in between shots of only 2 seconds. It gets 5 shots in its clip. And the gun attributes are amazing as well, with the best accuracy in the entire game at 0.29, an amazing aiming time of 1.5 seconds that's off the charts. This gun is literally the best gun in the game, there's no argument about it, it is the best gun in the game. And what are tank destroyers about if not the guns? And another pro is that it gets the choice of two guns. It can choose between a 150mm with higher alpha damage but worse attributes, or a 128mm gun with basically better attributes but worse alpha damage but higher DPM and burst. So far so good, why isn't this tank higher on the list? Well, it's a huge target with a horrible camo value and we all know that its armour is horrendous. This tank's turret is made of paper and uh, artillery and even normal tanks will just land HE shells in your turret all day long once you're spotted, making your life hell once you are detected on the map. And thanks to your bad camo value, that will happen quite a lot. So you really cannot afford to go aggressive in this tank. Also because of its huge damage output and vulnerable nature, this tank often is a priority target and gets focused down a lot when spotted. Another thing is, which in my opinion makes it somewhat risky to pick for a random battle, is that it is highly team reliant. Because you've got bad armour and not amazing manoeuvrability, you have to rely on your team's light and medium tanks to spot enemies for you so that you can take them apart from a distance. However, if your light tanks suicide at the start of the game or do not perform their role properly, you are in somewhat of a bad spot. And another disadvantage that I see with this tank that annoys me personally a bit is that it is open top, which means you cannot use improved ventilation, which would benefit this tank massively. And also because it's not loaded, you cannot use the enhanced gun rammer, which are the two best pieces of equipment in the game. So all in all, it is a great tank destroyer, but somewhat team reliant and vulnerable. That's why it is not the number one for me, but still quite a worthy runner up for this list. So at number 4 we'll have actually quite a surprising entry maybe and that was going to be the Jagdpanzer E100. Now although some people seem to think that this tank sucks, in my opinion it is an absolute powerhouse. It has got insane alpha damage, the second highest alpha damage on any tank in the game uh, except for the two British tanks of course. Uh, the two British tank destroyers uh, and the armor penetration on the gun is huge as well. It's got a beefy hit point pool especially for a tank destroyer and amazing armor. Also the gun actually um, considering that its damage and penetration might let you think that it's somewhat trollish. It's actually got surprisingly good accuracy and aim time too. The aim time is not superb at 2.7 seconds. The accuracy at 0.35 is actually pretty good 
And I mean, also we've got a freaking artillery gun. Literally, the gun used on the Jagdplanz E100 is more or less way better version of the gun used on the GW Tiger P. And you can feel free to fire HE shells at heavily armored enemies and still deal massive amounts of damage. Another huge factor, especially in random battles, I feel, is that enemies are really afraid of the Jagdplanz E100. I mean, who wants to drive around a corner if you know that a 17 centimeter gun is waiting on the other side of it? People have massive respect for this tank, and often you can single handedly defend an entire flank just because your enemies are too chicken to engage you front on. But obviously, not even the massive Jagdplanz E100 comes without its drawbacks. And speaking of massive, that's the first one. It's got a huge silhouette, and just as with the Waffen Trigger of E100, it has got bad camo value. Also, it is a very sluggish machine. It might not be as bad as you think, but it still isn't very fast. And as with most of these German tanks, it has got quite a weak lower glacius, which also you can't angle because you are in a tank destroyer with quite a narrow gun arc, and that's why angling a lower glacius would be really tricky. And then obviously you've got a huge reload time of about 20 seconds depending on your crew and equipment so that will leave you quite vulnerable almost as vulnerable as when clipping with an autoloader between shots so let's move on to number three as we move to number three we'll be leaving the german tech tree and if you were surprised to see the Jagdpanzer E100 in this tier list, then you'll probably be completely blown away when I tell you that I selected the T110E3 for my number 3 spot. A long time I completely underestimated this tank and I thought that it was quite useless actually. But I have recently played it a few times on the test server and although the gold ammunition flying around on the test server kind of negates the biggest advantage of this tank which is its insanely strong armor i still got a really good impression of the t110 e3 yeah just speaking of the armor its front is basically impenetrable it's got a huge gun mantlet uh, going up to sometimes 500 millimeters of effective armor thickness and all the rest of the front is insanely well armored as well even the weak spots being the machine gun turret on the top and the lower glacius are not really guaranteed penetrations. The cupola is very well armored and angled, and a lot of tier 10 guns, even when firing premium ammo sometimes, will ricochet. And the lower glaciers, I've personally made the experience that firing at it can be very unreliable if it penetrates or not, because the weak armor zone has got quite a low hitbox, and in my experience, most tier 10 guns aren't able to penetrate that either. Uh, also, this tank being American has got quite nice gun depression and um, this American tank destroyer line being known for its sluggishness, it is actually quite a speed upgrade coming from its predecessor, the T95. That being said though, the tank still is quite slow and its sides and rear are quite vulnerable compared to its frontal armour. Another problem with this tank can be that uh, its engine, if hit, uh, lights up quite easily. Still, in my opinion, this vehicle is amazing for random battles just because teams are not very coordinated and they will not be able to outflank you very often and that's why you'll be able to put your f amazing frontal armor to great use. Uh, also, many people are not able to hit your weak spots reliably uh, just because they don't have the skill or knowledge to do so. So your armor will be really effective in game and I think you can just absolutely destroy random battles in this vehicle and it actually is not too difficult to play either. You just enter the battle, you hit the R key three times and keep firing a gun basically and you should win. Obviously I'm simplifying things a bit here but in my opinion this is an absolutely great tank, one of the most underestimated vehicles in the game and I really think that players should show this tank some love. So now things are getting really interesting as we move up to my top two strongest tank destroyers in the game at the moment. In the number two spot we'll be having the Russian Object 263. And in my opinion, this is probably the most fun, oh no I'll take that back, I'll save that for the number one spot. But 
This is probably the tank destroy in the game with which I have the most success and which I feel is the best tank destroy suited for me. Although the number one tank destroy in the game has got it beaten a little bit in power in my opinion. Still, this tank destroy is absolutely amazing and I'm talking about the Object 263. This vehicle has got excellent rate of fire on its gun for a tier 10 tank destroyer and the alpha damage is not too bad actually it is comparable to that of a yak tiger at tier 9 so the dpm is absolutely ridiculous on this tank also the gun attributes accuracy aim time are really good on this vehicle and the penetration is very nice too uh, allowing it to hit most of its shots and put out a lot of damage especially if it gets to fire continuously at enemy targets and another great thing about this vehicle is because its rate of fire is that good, if you play it you do not have that big of a risk of being rushed by enemy mediums within your reload. If you play other tanks, like for example the Yakpanzer E100, that reload for 20 seconds in between shots, that's a huge window in which you can be shot to a burning wreck by enemies that rush you in that reload time. Also, this vehicle is really nimble and manoeuvrable and fast. It's got great power to weight ratio for a tank destroyer and actually is... I believe the most mobile tank destroyer in the game, it's even faster and more maneuverable than the French AMX-50 Foch 155 at tier 10. Another huge strong suit of this vehicle is its frontal armour. Now we talked about the T-110E3's amazing frontal protection, but actually the Object 263's frontal armour is not that much worse, except for its lower glaciers which is quite vulnerable. but. The rest of the front is absolutely impenetrable really, but uh, the sides and rear are not as good, actually they are paper thin and will allow high explosive shells to penetrate with ease most of the time. Another drawback is that this vehicle is open top, leaving it very vulnerable to artillery. It has also got the lowest alpha damage of all tier 10 tank destroyers, which is obviously compensated for by its rate of fire, still in some engagements that can hurt if you, for example, only get one shot off. The gun depression of this vehicle is quite bad as the gun is rear mounted, and also the ammo rack is very vulnerable because the sides of the tank are lined with ammunition. Still, for random battles, I think this tank is super effective because it has the speed, armor, and rate of fire and DPM to completely carry a game on its own and it is not team reliant compared to other vehicles like the Waffenträger of E100 or to some extent the Jagdpanzer of E100 too actually. So this tank is super strong and in my opinion probably is actually the best vehicle for carrying a game single handedly because it just is so versatile as a tank destroyer and so reliable. So I guess you're all excited to see the number one pick for my tank destroyers. So here we go, the number one spot and yeah, I know, I feel dirty, I feel ashamed of myself, but the FV215V183, AKA the Death Star it is. This tank is, I, mean, I don't know, I can't even describe it. This tank is just, in one word, it is completely ridiculous. It is absolutely insane. I mean, as a pro at this point, I'm just going to list the gun. I'm just gonna call it the gun. It has got huge damage. Now, they might be telling you, this tank's gun has got good penetration if you use the AP. It's got the best penetration in the game. The alpha damage with AP is good. They might be telling you that, but don't listen to people who say that. You do not want to fire AP in this tank. When you play the FV215B183, you want to load Hesh, because you still have better penetration than half of the other tier 10 tanks by being able to freaking one-shot every vehicle in the game. Well, I mean, maybe not a mouse, but you get the idea. This tank is just... I do not know what Wargaming was thinking when they implemented this vehicle in the game, but <laughs> it just ruins the fun for everybody. It is... I tried it out on the test server again uh, a few weeks ago and <laughs> you know you just feel you feel bad when you play it you you kind of feel like you have to apologize in chat every time you pull the trigger on this gun and you know it is not only the gun this gun is mounted on a turret yeah I mean it may not be able to traverse 360 degrees but it has got a huge traverse arc 
and uh, for armor is very good too, ignoring the lower plate, the rest of the armor is actually very difficult to penetrate. And you just pick this tank in the garage and you know you're gonna have fun. Like, if I play the FVT15B183 and I did beneath 6,000 damage in the game, I knew I did badly. You know, <laughs> you have to, you have to actually try to do less than, let's say, 5,000 damage in this tank in your game. Because you do about 2,000 alpha damage with each single shot, each time you pull the trigger. I mean, your shell price is really high, but, you know, who cares if you can have this amount of fun? It just feels unfair, really. I mean, okay, I guess you're punished by a uh, longish reload time, and accuracy and aim time are not too good on this tank. But, I mean, who cares? You're the Death Star. You destroy everything. You're obliteration made into a tank. This vehicle is so unfair and so much fun. I just cannot recommend it enough. I'm not even going to say anything else to this tank. It is just simply the number one vehicle in this game. And it is, yeah, it is absolutely insane. So I hope you enjoyed this, watching this video and I hope it was informative to you. Maybe you do not agree with my tier list and that's perfectly fine. Please let me know what your favourite or strongest tanks in the game are in the comments. And I'm looking forward to reading through your messages. I always enjoy having a good discussion about these kind of things in the comments. Please remember that this is only my personal opinion and uh, yeah, feel free to leave yours in the comments as I already said. So uh, thanks for watching as usual and I hope I see you in my next video next Friday or maybe even on the battlefield. And bye bye.